Hello everyone, Jessica Morales joining you now and I have the pleasure of being joined by Mr. Jeff Miller, President and CEO of Halliburton. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Oh, Miller. thank you, Jessica. Great to have you here. If we can start off, you spoke about the advancement of hydraulic fracturing over the last 70 years, an evolution that Halliburton, of course, we know has been front and center in. What do you think has been the biggest advance from the company or in hydraulic fracturing really in general during the time? Well, you know, it's a few things, but probably principally the amount of service intensity that we see today. I mean, it's just been incredible, you know, to go from really where we started at mm -hmm. 50,000 pounds of sand and one pump effectively to what we see on location today, 35, 40,000 horsepower, wow. millions of pounds of sand. You know, and the ability to do all of that uh, has really been re revolutionary. And are you hearing that from your customers about activity? Yes, I mean, what I hear about 2018, I describe it as customers are planning to work. Awesome. You know, and I think there's a lot of, you know, debate about how much they will work, but I, I, I'm convinced that, you know, all the customers that I talk to have, you know, thoughtful plans that are consistent with their own strategies. And I think that's the one thing to remember is that each company has, you know, different twists on their own strategy and that they want to execute, but all of them include, you know, producing uh, and fracturing uh, a lot of wells. And next, if you can, Mr. Miller, where, uh, where is that activity happening? I know you mentioned Permian, but talk about R&D efforts with regard to fracturing as well, if you can. Yeah, and so uh, fracturing technology takes a couple of tracks. So when I talk about more barrels or lower cost, you know, our technology investment follows those same two trains, uh, mm -hmm. trains of thought. Uh, so first, think about lower cost. That's where we become more efficient on location. So things like our Express Connect, wellhead connection unit that allows us to rig up more quickly and also remove uh, up to 75% of the connections on location. So that does a lot for surface efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, a lot of research is being done today around sensor technology, sensor diagnostics. So how much more can we know about the performance, not only of the frack, but also the performance of the well following the frack. A lot of technology talk we know. What do you see on the horizon in terms of challenges that you may be trying to solve or what's the next target, if you will? Well, we're always trying to make more barrels and we're always trying to make them at a lower cost. So mm -hmm. I'm fortunate I get up every day <laughs> with an infinite ramp of things to go work on. Mm -hmm. uh, probably in the more near immediate term though in the Permian Basin would be focused on people. And you know, good people are always important to our business. Uh, we have a fantastic workforce of about 3,000 out here. I'm grateful for every one of them. Uh, but we always need more. And so mm -hmm. staffing up for the equipment in the market as we've reactivated equipment, uh, that has always been an immediate sort of requirement for us. And can you share your thoughts on refracturing with us as well? Yeah, I mean, refracturing is a fantastic technology or approach, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's, uh, it, it needs to be used in specific ways. And by that, it's not a, a pump and spray approach where we go effectively replow the field. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has been extremely valuable in rescue type wells. That's where we started actually was uh, with wells that had collapsed or damaged casing. And the question was, how do we you know, salvage what's left of that well. And uh, by using diversion technology and, and what we understand about frack placement, we're able to effectively rescue wells that otherwise would have been junked. Now, as we start to understand better the pressure regimes in all of these fields, mm -hmm. uh, refracturing in effect has been a tool used to better maintain pressure so that the offset wells also get better fracks or get more productive fractures. So, you know, I'm excited about it when it's in engineered and used the right way, but it's never going to be a, a cure-all. Mm -hmm. And if you can, finally, Mr. Miller, uh, how do you think that fracturing has changed our future and how do you see it continuing to do so? Oh my goodness. I, see, <laughs> I think that's uh, because of fracturing and horizontal drilling, we have the shell revolution. Mm -hmm. The shell revolution is going to change the lives of everyone. I, I think that you know, broadly oil and gas just makes human life better. Mm -hmm. uh, it sustains life. And I think having access to uh, affordable and abundant energy in the U.S., it's transformed the global markets because the whole world is reacting to what's being done in the U.S. and particularly here in the Permian Basin today. Uh, so there's never been a more exciting time. Uh, oil has never been a more impactful. It's always been impactful, but I think the, you know, the, the unique place where unconventionals are has mm -hmm. created uh, like a whole new runway uh, for the U.S., 
and really for the quality of life. We want to thank you for joining us and giving us your time, Mr. Miller. Thank you. You're very welcome. And for more on executive interviews, please join us at oilandgasinvestor.com. To stay up to date on the most recent Heart Energy videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here.